Here we are in the Court of Stars, guys. A uh, pretty awesome new dungeon that they just released in this last build. And it is really interesting. Uh, basically, the way you start this off, you take a gondola ride. Nothing more soothing than a fresh gondola ride to get you started. So, what, I what does this dungeon basically consist of? It's, you are in the Court of Stars in Suramar. Um... Basically, all these high elves is the main focus. It is a generalized, looks really nice, but it's fairly simple, at least on the normal running. Um, as we take this gondola ride, just realize, guys, that this is still set up with trash packs that can destroy you completely. Uh, you'll have one pack that'll stun you, another one that'll drop AoE under your feet. And if you combine the two, guess what? instant death <laughs> uh, as you'll see right here from the beginning we get stunned in place and the AOE automatically right off the bat we end up getting destroyed because we grab too much now why did we grab too much well there's certain things that you gotta watch out for um, you have sentries that are out here and then you also have beacons and you'll end up seeing these beacons uh, if the sentries get to the beacons, you're going to end up pulling too much and it's going to cause you to wipe no matter what. But you can disable these beacons. Uh, as you can see, we have a sentry right there that's just going to town and we end up stopping him, get the rest of this, and uh, basically we tear this down and you'll see us deactivating the, uh, the actual beacon here in just a second. Um, see it going off. It's just going to keep pulling more and more people until... Uh, the beacons turned off guys so main focus always kill the sentry first because if they turn the beacons on it's going to be havoc and it just keeps summoning more and more mobs um, but basically the trash in this place isn't too bad as long as you do it pack by pack if not like I said you have some that do counteracting abilities uh, you'll have ones that um, like the big uh, golem style not golem but um, I don't know like robotic horse things that they've got out here I don't even know what they're classified as sentries constructs um, but they put the pools on the ground and then you have another one one of the high elves that will actually stun you in place and it becomes pretty painful now we're coming up to the first boss here but you're definitely gonna want to clear out as much trash as possible before you pull him uh, the reason for this he does a personal beacon. Basically, he turns himself into a beacon and pulls a bunch of trash in. But we'll get to that here in just a second when we get to pull him. And here we go. We're going to get engaged into the first boss, which is uh, Patriot Captain Gerdo. Uh, he's got a couple abilities, guys. He's got the Resonant Slash. And you can see, basically, it does a, uh, a cone effect forward and backwards, or it can go from left to right. And it's always going to choose the exact opposite location. So it's going to come from his sides or his front and back. The other thing that he has is the Arcane Lockdown. What Arcane Lockdown does is it slows you by a fuck ton. And in order to stop this, you've got to actually jump. And you can see he just summoned a bunch of people over uh, after doing his beacon. But with Arcane Lockdown, if you jump, you'll go ahead and break that ability. This guy wasn't that hard, even with summoning um, a bunch of mobs in. He's still fairly simple of a of a boss. And then he'll end up getting, uh, I believe it's at 20%. He'll go and he'll run over to this, uh, to the little well in the front there. And he's going to drink a random concoction. The one he drinks here is, uh, I believe it's like a stone skin potion. So he gets reduced damage. Nothing too big, guys. Uh, the fight was pretty decent. It could use a little bit more, but again, this is normal, so they, they, they finally got their tuning down, and I think they came out with the correct tuning for a normal dungeon um, on this one, so we'll, we'll stick with it. And as you can see, there's a flask of uh, Solemn Knight. That's what it is. And it's going to just buff him, and uh, I, I believe it reduces his damage a little bit, all, or increases his damage, reduces the damage he takes. But pretty simple, guys. But after you end up killing this guy, you're going to go on to the next part, which is going to be the court itself. And here we are. We're going into the court. You're going to end up clearing a shit ton of trash in this. And the reason for it is the boss is surround the second boss is surrounded by three different mob types, basically guards. And in order to get these guards, you got to kill off the trash, uh, kill off as much of the trash as possible basically. 
until you end up finding these little patrols. Um, and you do have, you have imps, you have the night elves, you have the constructs, you have inquisitors. There's all kinds of different trash in here. And the imps are extremely dangerous because they just keep casting non-stop fireballs. And I mean, it is insane how much damage they can do. So they, they are kind of a focused target. Uh, just remember that because they can do a lot of damage. Um, but once you end up killing enough of these, you're going to get a moving pat. And uh, we'll get into that here in just a second. Um, but again, guys, the, the whole point of doing this trash is you're going to get these Fellbound Enforcers. Now, they don't seem too terribly special themselves, but the reason why you need to get these is because if you try and take the boss right now with its three mini-bosses up there with it, you're going to get wrecked. When you kill off one of these, it's going to scream, and they are going to end up sending you one of the three mini-bosses until you get it down to where you're comfortable on taking it, uh, whether it's all of them or none of them. And again, here you go. The emissary must be notified. So here it is, and all of a sudden, boom, make yourself useful, take a look around, and she's going to send them off. Uh, each one of these mini-bosses does something a little bit different. I'm not going to get too involved in them because they aren't too terrible. Like, this Whirling Blade does nothing for damage um, in the normal version right now. None of their abilities are really that special, but it's just something to end up in increasing the dungeon length. Because if you didn't, it would be kind of short. But it's got some neat mechanics to it, guys. Um, and there's some random, like, lore stuff that's hiding around here that you can end up looking into. That kind of makes it cool. So, as we end up going through, you're going to end up taking this stuff and um, killing off these mini-bosses. And once you end up getting all three of these mini-bosses done, you'll be able to do the boss. And we are going to get right into the boss here in just... Boom. All right, so, uh, Tiloxy Flame Flamewreath, uh, if I'm saying that right, uh, it's going to do a couple mechanics, guys. She's going to cast Withering Souls, and what that does is it's going to dot everybody. It's going to put a dot that doesn't disappear. It can be dispelled, and it's going to continue stacking as you go. The other ability is what you just seen right there, where she ends up casting up a bunch of flame eruptions. And uh, they're basically what it is, it's fire, it's bad, don't stand in it. It'll knock you up into the air if you hit it, and it, right there, and it also does a little bit of damage. Honestly, the boss seemed a little lacking, um, but I believe our shaman, uh, our healer, our shaman healer was pretty pro on keeping us topped up and also doing the dispels at the right times to keep down the, uh, the dot. It's kind of like a soft enrage if it's not dispelled, guys, so again... Fairly simple fight, nothing too spectacular, but it is normal. Uh, the heroic and uh, the mythic plus versions will probably be a lot different than what this is. But as you can see, you've got a lot of room to work with because he done cleared everything around here. And now we're going to go into the next event. Uh, no fighting here, kind of weird. What what basically what you're doing is playing a game of Clue. You're going to take on this um, high elf form. All right, this costume basically, and you got to go through and talk to uh, all these party members, and you're going to talk to these different party members, and they're going to give you clues about who, like the the who is the sus suspect that, and once you end up finding out all the clues, basically you got to look at the models, find the model that they're talking about, and I'm sure this is going to change every single time because they've made a couple of their dungeons change every time you go in there. Arcway changes its path every time you're in it. Uh, this will probably end up changing. But you're going to find the correct one, and then you're going to call them out. If you call out the wrong one, it sends you back to the beginning um, of this room, and it stuns you out for like 15 seconds, and then you can come back in and check again. Challenge modes are going to be rough with this, or Mythic Plus, sorry. And uh, you're going to just have to pay real close details. And... Um, when you find the right one, they're going to be like, oh yeah, let's go have a little conversation. Hmm. We all know what happens when somebody wants to go talk to you alone. We've seen this in multiple deals. Uh, the dwarves, uh, what is it, in the, in the Blood Elf starting area, that dwarf does the same shit to you. Oh yeah, let's go have a little conversation up the stairs here. You know, and uh, basically, you're going to follow this chick. 
And she's going to turn into a huge demon mini boss. Kill it. Nothing special here. Carry on swarm. Basic little damage. There's no big deal with this mini boss. Cripple, yeah, it's going to be a normal slow. Uh, doesn't last very long. It is dispellable. Again, guys, nothing is special with this. It's just a mini boss. But once it's dead, it'll open up the door so you can go to the last boss, uh, which is Advisor Melandrus. And here we are. We're going to go into Advisor Melandrus real quick. And here it is. What's this guy going to do? Not a whole hell of a lot. It uh, does a random blade dash. It does Piercing Gale, which just a knocks back, um, summons up a couple tornadoes here. Uh, here's your Slicing Maelstrom. It's just a big AoE. The guy was fairly lackluster, guys. Um, minimal damage was out, but again, this is normal. Uh, I can see to where some of this is going to be a little bit rougher, at least on the healer. But there's nothing, nothing really too bad to worry about here, guys. Uh, random AoE, which there's no way of interrupting any of his abilities. You just got to basically end up taking him. Um, so that's another reason why it's probably a little bit lower also. But here it is. This is the whole thing. This is the fight. This is the whole entire match of this dungeon. And it seems a little lacking, but it has some cool new events. Uh, so it keeps you interested. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this. It was a first look. Um, it was kind of fun to end up doing. And it took a lot longer than what the video shows just because of all the new different stuff to end up doing. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead, throw us a like and a subscribe. And we'll definitely end up get you, getting you some of the best content out as soon as it's available. Thanks again.